It's a really sunny day today. So now it's getting in mood to start wanting to grow. But it is still too early. For quite a lot of things, at least. But there is other things that you can be getting prepared, ready for the start at season, come early spring. And one thing is your seed potatoes. And we've been out at weekend because in Chesterfield they have a little farmer's market and there's loads and loads of varieties of vegetable plants and also lots of different types of seed potatoes. You can get your seed potatoes from Wilco's but if you want something a little bit different you're going to have to go that little bit farther and because over the past few years, we've always stuck to one particular type of main crop potato, that being Desiree. We've always had problems with that, especially with scab, which kind of ruins your entire harvest if you're not careful. So this year, we decided to do something different, and we've picked out a few different varieties of potatoes that we've actually never grown before. And what we'll do is, we'll go through these varieties of potatoes that we're growing this year, and then we'll go over how I'm going to be planting them and what I'm going to be planting them in because this year it's going to be a little bit different so let's start off with some of these varieties and also this year I'm not doing any first early potatoes because you only get little small salad potatoes out of them so I'm going to skip those and go straight to the second earlies so the first one that I've chose for this year is called Kestrel and it's a good all round potato in regards of cooking but it's also slug resistant so because we seem to have quite a lot of problems with slugs in this garden anyway I think Kestrel will be one to try because normally we do something like Rocket but we're not doing those this year as I said everything that we're growing is going to be completely different to what we did last year and they're not huge potatoes again they're kind of like a salad potato and you need to look for the part of this potato where chits will be growing. Because I always chip potatoes before I plant them. Some people say you don't have to. And that's quite true, you don't have to. But the idea behind chitting is to get this potato growing before you plant it. It gives you a bit of a jump on season. And for me personally, I don't want to be putting taters into buckets with damp compost that haven't already started growing, especially with this UK weather, because if it drops really cold, as it does tend to between February and May, then before these get going, there's a chance they might rot instead. Then you're gonna have to start all over again. So they're Kestrel. Another one that I'm doing is called Amor. And people will argue that these are actually a main crop potato, which they can be used as a main crop, but they can also be used as a second early. The only difference being is you can plant them at the same time that you would plant your second earlies, but these can be left a little bit longer to get a bit bigger. Once again, a good all round potato. And then his last one for a second earlies is one called Nicola. And these ones are particularly good for making mash out of. So we're going to try some Nicola and that's all the second earlies that we're going to be doing so far this year. Then we're doing some main crops and these look quite small but they will produce good sized potatoes. And these are called Picasso and these are also very good for your mash but they're also a good one for baked potatoes. So we thought we'd give these a try as one of his first main crops this year. But then we wanted to try something different as well. And I don't think you can get much different than these ones. And these are called pink fir apple. And I'll show you a little bit closer up. Because the strangest potatoes you'll ever see. That's how they grow. Obviously they get bigger than that because this is just a seed. But the kind of knobbly, misshapen, wonky potatoes. But when you grow things like this. These have actually got quite a good flavour and they've also got a nutty flavour to them as well. So it's something different for us to do this year. And obviously with something like that, the best way to deal with these is to just give them a really good scrub 
chop them and then boil them as they are or roast them so pink fur got to try them and these are also a main crop potato and apparently they store really well so if you've not tried them before maybe give them a go then another main crop we're doing is called Carlos and this apparently is dual light resistant so this makes a really good one especially for me we having the weather that we have and if you get blight it's a massive problem and in effect it will just ruin your entire harvest so to get hold of one that's blight resistant for me is a really good start so we'll try some of these this year see how they go and then we'll move on to the main one that i want to try this year i see lots and lots of videos about these and people get really good results and once again these are blight resistant and they're also slug resistant so these ones are called sapo mirror if you look it up on youtube you'll see loads and loads of people that grow these in containers which is what we're going to be doing this year and they get very good results they get very big potatoes and these are perfect for your chips and roast potatoes but they're also very high yielding potatoes so you can grow them in a container and expect that container to be full so these are the main ones that we're doing this year we also picked up a couple of other different bits and bobs while we were there because once you go to places like this and you're a gardener you're a bit like a kid in a toy shop so you kind of run around grabbing anything different that you see and because on this channel we like to do things different every year and experiment with things you can't resist picking up something that you've not grown before one of the things that I did pick up was some more peas and these are called twinkle so you can grow these just for pea shoots if you want and they're going to be really nice and sweet flavoured but you can also just grow them as a regular plant but they don't grow huge they grow to about 22 inches tall and you get quite a few pea pods from one plant and they're not taking up a lot of space so this is one again that you could grow in a container so some different peas for this year twinkle I also got some more onions as if I hadn't already got enough growing but these were different these are called Florence and they're a long red onion so they can grow up to about six inches in length and they're a very mild onion as well as being a sweet onion so these will be perfect for your salads or pickling and the fact that I've never grown these before is enough for me to get some to try so we'll see how they get on this year and then I bought a pack a tender green and these are French beans and once again they're a bush variety so we're not looking to get big constructions in garden made of canes and netting this year because we only want a few of everything and these will be a lot easier to manage and since we also do that container garden these will be perfect for that so we'll pop some of these in some containers in a few weeks time and we'll get those growing so you can see that that one little trip out has produced so many different things for us to try this year but the main thing is for me personally is that you spend a lot of time sorting out your ground and you plant your seed potatoes and then you get to a point of year where it's time to harvest unfortunately around here we get lots of bad winds and nearly every year we get plants that are not flat and it kind of ruins it but then it ruins it even more when we dig up these potatoes and then find out they've been attacked by slugs or they're covered in scab which makes for a very poor harvest but more importantly a lot of time wasted very disappointing so this year we're going to avoid that problem by trying varieties that have been tried and tested as being blight and slug resistant so hopefully this year we're going to get a really good harvest and we're also going to get a lot of different varieties but other than that i've decided this year that i'm not planting any potatoes outside in raised beds there's too many problems in this part of the country we weather late frosts bad winds so everything is going to be going in containers 
and we'll just stick to things like onions, few carrots, cabbages, cauliflowers in raised beds outside. And of course when you come to planting out your potatoes, you will be better off chitting them first. Get them growing before you put them in that compost and bury them just a couple of inches deep so that when that plant comes out and you see the green foliage appear, you can then bury it again and then bury it again and keep doing that until you get right at the top of your container. At least that way you can see something is happening rather than waiting three months and then realising it's just not worked. So you've got to start all over again and you've cost yourself a lot of time doing that. And we know that potatoes, especially main crops, need a long growing season. So then you just have to decide what kind of container you want to put it in. And you can put potatoes in something like that. As small as a 10 litre pot. This is slightly bigger. But if you put them in a 10 litre pot, you will still get potatoes. But obviously, at this size, you want to be reserving these for things like first earlies and second earlies. Because they're quite small potatoes. You don't want to be putting sarpos or something like that in here because you'll end up with two big potatoes. That's no good. So first and second earlies in a little container like this is perfectly fine. And you can just pop them on your patio. Or you could leave them in your greenhouse. Obviously, if it gets too hot, you want to move them outside. But we tend to put them in containers quite early in season in the greenhouse to get a jump on season. And if you look back on previous videos, you'll see that that worked quite well. Ideally, for your main crop potatoes, you want something like this. That's a 30 litre container. And these are the type that most gardeners on YouTube use, especially for the Sarpo Myras. And you'll be very surprised at how many potatoes they can get after a container that size. And for something like this, you'd put two seed potatoes in there. And again, bury them a few inches deep. Once you see they're starting to grow, keep filling them until you get right to the top. So that's your 30 litre ideal for main crop varieties. And of course, you can go even bigger if you want to. It depends on what containers you've got kicking around in your garden that obviously this time of year are going to be doing nothing. But the bigger the container, the more seed potatoes you can put in it and then potentially the more potatoes you will get from an harvest. But bear in mind, if you put too many seed potatoes in one container, they will all grow, but you will eventually end up with smaller potatoes. So that choice is entirely up to you. If you want really big potatoes, a couple of seeds in there will be enough. But if you're happy with average sized potatoes, you could try three. Then of course you could also go even bigger with one of these large bell pots. And for something like that, I would put three seed potatoes in something that size, because you've got plenty of room. And bear in mind that when it comes to main crop potatoes, they grow upwards. So you plant a potato at the bottom, it will grow, then it sends out a tuber. Then you'll see the foliage coming out of the top of the compost and you'll bury it. And then it'll grow up even more and then put out more tubers and so on until it gets right to the top. So your main crop potatoes grow upwards. So you could potentially end up with lots of potatoes in a container that size. But also bear in mind that when you're planting things like first earlies and second earlies, those potatoes grow outwards. It's only your main crops that you have to keep burying or earthing up, as they call it. So the more you bury them, potentially, the more potatoes you'll get. And that's how we're gonna be doing ours this year, containers only. So. You know what varieties we've got this year and you know we'll cover them step by step as they're growing and then we'll wait for those nice potato reveals at end of the year which everybody looks forward to who watches gardening channels and hopefully this year we'll get a lot better success than we have done in previous years with having so many different varieties to choose from and also having lots of them that are disease resistant. If you want to see the next few videos we'll be doing, which will cover chitting these potatoes and then planting them, plus all the other things that we've got going on at the moment, and a lot more to come, then please hit that subscribe button, press that notifications bell, and we look forward to seeing you on the next update. Take care.